Up next in the MonsterVerse, Godzilla and Kong will once again join forces against a massive, unknown kaiju. But will this guy get even bigger? Today on Goji Center, we will explain how this dude went from being this big to this colossal titan in a matter of only 51 years, while uncovering the mysteries of this guy's origins and figuring out if Kong will grow even larger in the hollow earth. Make sure you subscribe, like this video, and watch till the end to be properly informed before the next film drops. Coming up, the Kong species growth explained. This video will be divided into three parts, which will cover all three essential clues that explain all we need to know to finally answer this question. Between the events of 1973 and 2024, Kong almost inexplicably grew from being 104 to 337 feet in height. That's around 3.2 times bigger in a very short period of time. Here's a size comparison for you to see how this guy changed. Note how this animal has adult proportions even at this small size. An infant would most likely have a larger head in comparison to the rest of its body and not be as muscular as an adult. So why does this Kong look like an adult while only being a third of the size of this mature Kong? We got a whole lot to explain in this video, so pay close attention. Number 1. The Adolescent In Kong Skull Island, we were introduced to Kong for the first time in the MonsterVerse. During the film, it was explained by Hank Marlowe that Kong was a teenager. Measuring at 104 feet in height, this guy already dwarfed most creatures on this island. But there was a problem. A big problem. This guy should have actually been bigger at this age, but he wasn't. There were other forces at play that hindered this Kong from experiencing his natural growth patterns. On this island, there was evidence of another pair of Kongs that lived here a while ago. These guys, Kong's parents. These Kong specimens were at first glance a lot larger than the Kong we see here. These guys were considered full-grown by the author of this book, but fast forward to GVK, this Kong is also full-grown. So what the heck is happening here? Why are all these said full-grown Kongs not as big as the one from GVK? Well, we have an answer for this. And this was backed up by both authors of these graphic novels, Birth of Kong and Kingdom Kong. If you didn't know, these titan species are affected by something similar to a phenomenon known as indeterminate growth, which states that said creature's growth development levels are dictated by many factors such as space, territory, food, and most importantly, stress. This is the big problem we were talking about earlier. But what is causing this stress? Well, let's begin with this Kong. We mentioned that this guy should be bigger, but he wasn't. It just so happened that there was a certain someone stressing this guy out. And perhaps the only reason why this Kong could not grow to a larger size, Ramorak. Also known as the Big One, this skull crawler of gargantuan proportions lived in the subterranean caverns of Skull Island, laying dormant but still considered a stressor nonetheless. Upon killing it in Kong Skull Island, this guy managed to finally unlock the next growth spurt. And since there were no more predators to challenge it or to stress it out, this Kong was able to reach its true adult size without any hindrances. But hold on a second. This doesn't explain why Kong's parents never reached full size. Well, back to the comic, we see that these guys were a lot larger than 1973 Kong, measuring anywhere between 180 to 200 feet in height. How did they get larger than this Kong, but not as large as GVK Kong? Again, with the topic of indeterminate growth, even though these guys faced many large skull crawlers, these two Kongs weren't alone. They actually lived with many others of their own kind who were around the same size. Because there were more of them, their stress levels would have been a lot lower than Kong's because they lived in a group. They had safety in numbers, which would then possibly allow them to grow a little bit larger, but not enough to reach full size. Unfortunately for this group of Kongs, they never managed to grow large enough to effectively fend off a horde of skull crawlers, which ended up wiping them out. Only this guy survived, present day Kong. Now, if we look at how big he was, we can estimate he was around 40-ish feet in height, almost half the height of Kong in 1973. But would all infant Kongs be this size? Probably not, and here's why. Number 2. Adult Kongs So, proportionately, if we look at these smaller adult Kongs and compare them to their offspring, there is a certain ratio. Does that mean that the offspring of these Kongs are the same size as this? 
We're going to have to take an educated guess here and say no. It's possible that the larger Hollow Earth Kongs had offspring that would rival the size of the 1973 adolescent, simply because it wouldn't make any sense for a colossal Kong to give birth to something this small. If for whatever reason this adolescent Kong were to be introduced to other adolescent Hollow Earth Kongs, this guy would have been dwarfed simply because these two individuals grew up in different situations. So, back to this guy. Note that as soon as this skull crawler was killed, Kong had a lot of catching up to do in terms of growth. There were no predators to put a stress cap on its growth levels, and he had the island all to himself, meaning that the remainder of the resources here were all his. The remaining space to grow was also in his favor. Fast forward only 22 years later and he already doubled in size. Another 20 years and he would have reached 337 feet tall, a fully grown Kong specimen. But this raises another question. How do we know that this guy is actually fully grown? To answer this, we need to look at other clues that tell us that this size is indeed the maximum size of Kongs. There are two main indicators. Number one, archaeological findings discovered by monarch expeditions have uncovered cave paintings which depict confrontations between Gojiras and Kongs. By looking at these proportions, they already closely resemble the size comparison between two fully grown titans. So yes, the Kongs fighting the Gojiras in the Great Titan War were these guys. Not the miniature ones that got wiped out by the skull crawlers, these big fellas. The next clue is a lot more interesting. Number 2. The Battle Axes How is this an indicator of their maximum size? Let's go back to GVK to this clip, when Kong holds up the axe for the first time. While putting these weapons together, these guys would create tools that would have been proportional for other animals their size. This axe just so happened to be just the right size for this Kong. Anything bigger, such as a larger handle for instance, would have led us to believe that the axes were made for even larger Kongs. So was Kong the biggest one that ever lived? Probably not. Just like us humans, there are many of us who are very tall, some that are more bulky, and perhaps some that are somewhat short. Similarly, we'd like to think that there was a similar variety within ranks of the Hollow Earth Kongs, since it's completely unrealistic to think that they were all the exact same size. A good example of this is found in Godzilla Dominion, where it is implied that there was another member of the Kong species, a Hollow Earth giant who kicked Godzilla out of his own lair. This fella had to have been massive. It's unclear whether it was bigger than Kong, but surely around the same size. Now, will our present day Kong remain this size now that he lives in the Hollow Earth, or will he get bigger? Number 3. Hollow Earth Kongs Now that we settled that this guy is full grown, now the only thing left to discuss is if this guy will truly remain this size or gain any other special abilities. Keep in mind that in GVK, we witnessed the very first time Kong set foot in the Hollow Earth beyond the Vile Vortex. According to the Monsterverse lore, this is the birthplace of all the Titans, housing a class of energy that is not found on the surface of the Earth. That includes Skull Island. Prior to GVK, Kong had only received nourishment from Skull Island and other surface-dwelling sources. Now it's all different. He now has access to an infinite amount of energy sources that could potentially help him health-wise. In the last installment, this guy was portrayed as a much mature and older Titan. But we'd like to think that once entering his new home in a new environment, Kong will once again feel rejuvenated, once again jump-starting his body to its full potential. In terms of growth, however, it is actually possible that we have already seen the biggest Kong. But if he still does grow, it will most likely be a bare minimum. In the next upcoming film, both Godzilla and Kong will have to be at their full potential, rested, trained, and in shape, because whatever is coming up next will have to be able to prove a worthy matchup for not one, but two Alpha Titans. We will cover more about this new Titan that could appear in the next film in a future episode. But for now, let us know in the comments whether you think Kong will change, get bigger, or just stay the same. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.